Well, I mean, I think we're all trying to do the same things. Obviously, we're trying to win. We're trying to, to, to make our teams better. We're trying to improve them, and it's competitive. Um, you know, there's, there's great ideas. I think there are best practices, and, you know, the data and the health and safety and, and a lot of those reports and, you know, being able to have that data, um, you know, I think can, can really help us. So, you know, this is a great group. It's a great fraternity to be a part of. We understand how competitive it is, um, but it's, it's a great group to be able to get to see and work and, and visit with. Well, I mean, I think I have interest in, in everything that goes on in that committee. I mean, if there's something specific that you want to discuss, I, I mean, I would love to, but I think I've tried to take it all as serious as I possibly can and put the time in with the other committee members, uh, have dialogue, uh, listen to, to all the ideas, listen to everybody's thoughts, and, and try to come to you know a consensus on you know what's best for the league. And you're not going to get everybody to do, agree on everything, uh, but but I but I enjoy the process. What do you think about the front touch pass? Yeah, at the end of the front no, I don't think that's the. I mean, the, this, the injuries in in the kick play are significant, right? The injuries, uh, the rate in, in which those occur on those plays are significant. It's it's space, it's speed, um, and I understand it, you know. But it just makes sense. Like, I don't know if that's going to eliminate, that's going to decrease punts. Maybe a few teams go for it. Um, if their punter isn't, um, doesn't excel in that, you know, it's five yards. But we put it at the 25 for, you know, the kickoff. So if the ball goes in the end zone on a kick, on a, on a free kick, um, they would put it at the 25-yard line or a scrimmage kick, make it just consistent. Um, punting's gotten so good. You know, they've, they've really uh, far exceeded – um, really, in the last few years, of, I mean, just the distance and how good some of these guys can be in a plus 50, you know, the different kicks that go and you used to stand on the 10-yard line with your heels on the 10, and it's like, don't back up. And now if you don't catch it at the 7 or 8, it's going to stop within two yards. It, that's how good some of these punters are. So, you know, I, I just like the idea just from the consistency standpoint of putting it at the 25 and just making it just like the kickoff. Do you watch XFL at all? So, like, any of those rules? We've looked at those and we've studied those. Um, you know, the, the ball is in play. The, the, the ball, the return is in play. So where do, they can't tell us what the injury rate is or what that looks like on that format, even though that that's what they're doing. Um, we do know that the ball's in play. Um, you know, what are the impacts of 10, 10 players standing five yards across from each other? What's the, the, the helmet contact? You know, what is all that? You, you know, those are great ideas, and, and we'll continue to explore those and look at it. Um, yeah, I think maybe starting uh, with Daniel, you know, Brunskill, just some versatility. You know, somebody that that I think we've always um, appreciated from afar. You just look at his versatility and his ability to play across the, the line. Um, I also like the fact that he's self-made. This is a guy who spent two years on a practice squad, and this is um, a, a player that went and played in an auxiliary league to come back and make it. You know, and, and so I try to use him as an example to, to my own son, to Tyler. Like, hey. You know, look at this guy's, you know, story. And he started a bunch of football games and, you know, now he's on our team. And, um, you know, so I like really that versatility. Andre uh, Dillard, you know, is, is a player that, that we feel like is, his best football is in front of him with a new opportunity. Um, very skilled um, pass protector, which is, is something that we have to improve on. We have to be able to protect our quarterback um, bad things happen. We've, we've all seen it. We've always talked about it. So I was excited to be able to add him. Um, Sean um, Murphy Bunting. Uh, he's, he's got really good length, good athleticism, good ball skills. And, and, and again, I had a situation in Tampa. You know, we've all seen it, even, even myself. Sometimes a change of scenery 
uh, and a new opportunity can can do players well. So um, excited about that. Arden Key was was a player that has factored and seen him grow. Met with him. A lot of these guys I can we've referenced our 30 visits of them coming in and Arden and I said I'm just proud of him. I mean the guy had a lot of question marks. People had a lot of concerns about him and um, told him I was proud of what he's done uh, in the league. You know to come in and be able to to figure it out and move from. The 49ers to Jacksonville, and, and now be excited to come to our team. And you know he's got a lot of great energy. I love his juice, uh, but also his ability to play at different spots across the front on third down, and his ability to impact the their quarterback. Um, Aziz uh, really just you know just getting to know him and his background and his maturity. Um, really like the way that he he plays, but also just the the person and and who he is. Um, am I leaving anybody out? Okay, and 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 Luke, you know we, we're just able to add some length and some speed to the to the linebacking core, uh, and, and a premier special teams player in the past, and you know, thought that he had some versatility to play inside, potentially play on the edge in some packages and. You know, he's got some length and, 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 get, and has some speed. You mentioned that speed. I know going in, that, that was an area you wanted the roster to improve. Do you feel like you, you've done that with these Well, guys? I mean, I think that, yeah, in those positions, you know what I mean? And there's still a lot of positions that we need to address, whether that's through, you know, multiple ways. Um, but do I think that, Luke showed ability to run on special teams. Yeah. Do I think that Aziz plays fast? Yes, on film. Do I think Arden Key showed a level of, of speed and violence when he rushed? Yes. Um, you know, Daniel and, 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 and Dre, you know, they're old linemen. Just stay between their guy and the ball and, and finish in the quarterback and, and finish longer than the guy with the ball. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. And that's continuing to, to develop. At the receiver position. Yep. Sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think we're always just, you know, we're trying to, to, to put the right pieces in place, right? Whether it's a, it's a, it's a big, fast guy, a small, fast guy, it's a, it's a smaller, quicker player. It's, it's you're trying to find what the fit and the value is uh, at every position. And so we, we, Rand and I and everybody on the coaching staff and the personnel side, we all Understand that we're going to have to find some guys that can that can get open and catch the ball, um, that are hard to tackle after they catch it, um, and and so we'll, we're we're going to continue to do that. Does he talk to fire? And where do you feel like the organization is with him right now? With Kevin, I mean Kevin's under contract. Kevin's a valuable, valuable member of our football team. I've I've said that uh, his durability and his leadership. Um, you know, and so we'll see where things go. Um, but but as of now, there's there's nothing to report. Um, the communication has been really good. I, you know, we tried to make a great connection with him as a, as a as a player and a captain on our team for five years, and you know th- those are those are conversations that you know will happen between Kevin and, and his agent and Rand and myself, and you know try to find ways to to continually improve our football team. Well, I don't think that that's, you know, those are hypothetical questions. I don't know uh, the defense. Uh, he's been a part of our team for five years, so I can't hypothesize what that would be. Yeah, you know, nobody really can identify anything and changes are made until we go out there and start to start to play, play games, meaningful games. You got to win, you got to score points. And uh, you got to take what personnel that you have and, and and put them in the best position. So excited where things are now with Tim and the conversations with Charles London and Justin Outen, Tony Dews, um, you know, our offensive line staff. I, Rob Moore. I, I I love the love where it's at, but to say anything more than that, you know, would just be a prediction.
Well, I think you have to spend some time with them. You have to be able to figure out who, who they are, you know, when things aren't good, you know, when things, when there's adversity, how do they respond to adversity? What kind of teammate are they? Can, can you trust them? You know, can you trust them to prepare? Can, can, can the, are they accountable? And if they're not, are they willing to, to address it and, and own it and, and fix uh, mistakes? You know, that's you know, really just looking at whether you can trust uh, everybody that you want to have a part of the organization. To be accountable about what they've done, I guess. I mean, can their love of football overcome any adversity of players? Well, I don't know if they if love of football and, you know, their actions. I mean, you know, we, we, we want to invest in people. We want to invest in the right people, uh, whether they're players, coaches, you know, anybody that's a part of our organization. Like, we want to, we want to hire great people. We want to coach great people. And, yeah, they have to be talented. Um, but I just know that uh, it, it's too hard when there's inconsistencies. Yeah, he is. He is. And so, you know, was happy for Chase to be able to get that opportunity with the Rams. You know, knew that probably when we hired him, didn't think it would be long. Um, you know, so Walk and I had talked about, you know, what we would need to do. Um, and, and he kept coming back to, to Anthony Levine, you know, just – talking with him and, and hearing him what he was doing in Baltimore and the type of player that he was um, and excited it is to get rolling with him and he's got a lot of passion for coaching Tennessee State guy and uh, he, he's, he's excited I mean he just and he's like he was a little unsure just like a lot of young coaches and former players that you know they think they 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 want to do this and then finally he's just fully committed and give all credit for staying with them and then Tom Quinn brings that veteran presence so I was really excited to be able to add both of those um, people to the special teams um, you know Matt's just an O-line guy you know he's kind of uh, you know they loved the interview lo loved his energy loved his ability to uh, to teach and, and what he wanted to communicate uh, to the players so I felt like you know, with those three in the O-line room, you know, could easily give each coach, you know, five guys. You know, let's say we sign 16 guys or we go into the training camp with 16 offensive linemen. Could easily see um, each one of those coaches just taking a group and saying, hey, you work with this one, you work with this one, or you have the tackles, you have the guards, you have the centers, whatever it may be. That's how good I felt about, it, you know, Matt and, and his communication. Had, had a real, uh, you know, I, maybe I didn't explain this quite as well, but, you know, trying to bring Anthony along and, and really have a vision for him and believing in him, but just needed a little bit more experience. And I'm excited that we were able to add uh, both of them. Um, and, and Tom's going to be able to help Anthony and Tom's going to be able to assist with Auk and Anthony's going to be able to help Auk and our, and our gunners and some of our, our special teams, our safety, DB, wide receiver, skill guys. You know, so I think they all bring a certain level of uh, a certain skill set to, to coach and special teams. Well, I think that he's got to uh, earn that right, earn it. And, but I think that that's, you know, that, that, that's why you're, you're, you're making some of these moves in free agency. You know, he's got to go out and earn it just like everybody else, but I think he's going to have the opportunity to do that. Coach Mike, I want to ask you, you guys looked hard at quarterbacks in the draft last year. I covered the commanders for ESPN. They obviously go with Sam Howell. I'm curious what you recall about him throughout that draft process when you guys thought. Uh, I, you know, I don't really recall last year's draft evaluation. I think that he won a lot of games in UNC. Um, you know, seemed to be a great leader. Um, you yeah, know, I just that that's a long time ago. I'm sorry. It is. When you're looking at in the draft, Brent, in general, what are the qualities that you like to look for? In who? Quarterbacks. Uh, I think, I mean, leadership, 
you know, how, how these guys rally uh, and, and what the players around them, you know, how they feed off of them, their toughness, you know, accuracy. You know, do they take care of the football? You know, the, the turnover margin and the rate of uh, success in our league, is those are too telling of a stat to not look at the way that a player protects the football, uh, whether that's in the pocket, whether that's scrambling, or that's when they throw it. You know, if they're putting it in harm's way, um, that's a tough way to win in this league. Is you know, 75% of the teams that win a turnover margin win the game. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. It's we've decided. Uh, that we want to make a connection, a personal connection with every player uh, on our team, with every coach. And some of those connections and those relationships are stronger than others. Um, I've always said that. And we, we want to get to know them. We want to be able to help them on the field. That's our first job, but off the field as well with, with anything that they have with, with what we have. And, and we're together a lot. And so that personal connection, that means something. Uh, but there is a, a business side. There, there is a professional side that we, we all have to work through. And um, th those, all, all these players that, you know, I would say that have been here for five years since I've been here really have meant a lot to, to our program, to our team, to our organization, to our fans, you know, to our, to our coaching staff. And so we'll continue to work through all those um, professional conversations the the best that we can as we continue to build you know a football team that we feel like can win a championship I don't know what damage control is I mean this is just uh, having conversations uh, throughout the roster with with players you know what I mean that their contracts are are up or they have years remaining on their contract or players that are in restricted free agents. I mean, you're always trying to have honest conversations with them and understand that there, there is a business side of this um, and, and trying to do what's best for the team. Of course. You know, I mean, of course we do. Uh, that's, you know, we're, we're in March. We're continuing to build a, a football team the best football team we can and Ryan's healthy he's getting healthy I would say that you know he's putting work in it's been good to see him around the building um, so yeah you know we always expect that but to, to make predictions I think I've been through this last year I'm not going to commit to anybody being on roster on September you know what I mean I just I, I've seen it change too quickly and of course that you know we want Ryan as our quarterback and everybody else that's helped us win like that's what we want Um, some what would you like to work with? great I've always enjoyed Monty I've always enjoyed our relationship and our conversations um, appreciated his viewpoint on evaluate you know, player evaluations um, it was always easy to work with and happy for him for this opportunity that he has in Arizona We got an opportunity. We coached him. Uh, he took the coaching. He's an extremely hard worker. I'm happy for him to have this opportunity to go and, you know, get a significant contract for himself and for his family. What did his skill set did you try to bring out? Well, I mean, it's, you know, he, he played hard. He, he was coachable, and uh, he played hard, and, and, and he was able to, to produce. You know, when given the opportunity, he did. And so that's a credit to him. All the credit goes to him and what he was able to do. And, you know, I always tell these guys, whether we, whether we can bring you back or whether you can go somewhere else, like that's, that's why you do this is to, to support your family and to, to take care of your family and everything else. I, there was a lot. He, he was versatile, and so he was able to play spaces and spots where we needed him. 
uh, due to injury. But you know, I'd say he predominantly played more inside than he did outside. But you know, in a short week, you know, he played outside for us and and was really he was always into it. Anytime that we gave him a new uh, task or job or role, you know, he was all in. It wasn't well. I'm not sure. It was yeah. Let's go. I'll give it a try. And loved his energy at practice. Happy for him. Would like to, you know, I mean, we do have some conversations, I, I think, with a few teams. Can't really commit to anything right now but because of the, the schedule. Um, but I think that they'll we'll probably travel to somewhere and work uh, and then probably host somebody the third week. There's some data, you know, that some of these injuries uh, that we can, you know, try to mitigate after the, the first two weeks of training camp. You know, so the recommendation is that the joint practices occur uh, after the uh, after the first regular uh, preseason game. So we'll try to do weeks two and three potentially. Yep. I don't. I don't personally support those proposals. I don't support um, using replay to um, to address you know flags on the field or potential flags. We tried that um, disastrously, and so if that's a word, Ashley. Um, but consistency is something that we're all striving for, uh, and I, and hopefully the points of clarification. Uh, that we've discussed uh, at length with the officials, with the officiating department, can, can hopefully start to you know, close the gap of, of some of those inconsistencies. What did you think when the commissioner said that officiating is as good as it's ever been? I was striving to, to make it more consistent. You know, that's, those are my conversations. You know, the commissioner, is, it's his right to, to evaluate the officials my goal is just to try to make it more consistent so that everybody sees it as closely through the same set of eyes as possible. That you see it as a foul, that Teron sees it, that Ashley sees it, that Sean Hockley sees it, and that the players see it. You know, because then everybody, then there's no questions. What's the biggest obstacle for that? Speed. I mean, this is a fast game. I mean, I stand behind the quarterback in practice, and it's like, was that a hold? And if you're not looking at the right place and the mechanics, you know, DPI. You know, I talk with this to Tehran all the time about this. Like, we want to ne not necessarily reward the defender, but we got to give him some leeway for playing the ball. Like 50-50 balls that we throw at 40 yards downfield should just be that. It shouldn't be 65 for the offense and 35 for the defense because there's a DPI in there. So if we're teaching them to to find the football, that some of that contact, you know, or play the football, we should all see it the same way. And if he's not playing the ball and there's contact, we should all see it the same way that it's a flag and not, uh, it's, no, was he playing the ball? Was there contact? There should be a flag. Well, I mean, I think that you have to, you know, you have to have a foundation for what you believe in. You know, I think we do. Um, you know, I think you have to figure out how some of these players learn what, what they're capable of and not giving them too much and not overloading them. You know, whether that's um, using Roger McCreary as an example, like how much do you want to put him inside, how much do you want to play him outside. <coughs> you know, one call, and, I, and I've, I've lived this world where, you hear cover two, and you're an outside corner. Here's my responsibility. You move 10 yards inside, and now you have a completely different responsibility. You're like, oh, shit, I'm the nickel. Like, I went from corner to nickel, or I'm a safety, and I went from safety down to money, or I went from safety to nickel. So that may seem like it's not a big deal, but, you know, in the heat of the moment and, and the speed of the game, th those two job responsibilities based on where you align – are very different so if they if we do have younger players then we have to identify what they can do and what they can understand and the more that they can comprehend and understand and can they play more than one position then we'll do that but I think that's our job first and foremost 
You know, you have a guy like Daniel Brunskill, right? He, he's going to know every position along the front because that's what he's been able to show. We may get another player that may just be able to play one position and understand what his one position is. Sure. Yeah, you know what I mean? We have had comp uh, communication with both those. We've seen seen Chance uh, back in the building as he uh, recovers um, from the knee surgery. Uh, Jamarco, you know, disappointed. I know he's disappointed, you know, kind of in the injury and, and, and coming back and trying to compete at training camp and, you know, didn't, didn't work out like any of us wanted it to, but um, he will have an opportunity. You know, we'll just have to see. But, you know, he's got to come back healthy. He's got to come back ready to go. And I think he understands uh, what the competition is going to be. We, we have to put, we have to have competition, you know, throughout our roster. That, that's something that's critical. That's the only way that everybody gets better. Absolutely. As of now, you know, I would anticipate us adding another kicker. Um, not closing the door on bringing Randy back either. Uh, but we have to provide some, some competition uh, there and, and everywhere else. Just, just being conscious, and this wasn't, you know, whether and you can include David Long in that. I mean, it, it, it's just a recognition of, you know, it, and it's all of us. It's we're all, you know, I mean, but at what point in time is there are there warning signs before? You know what I mean? Are you are you starting to feel something, and are you trying to work through it, or what is the load management? You know, what I mean, what are those signs? And just use those two players as examples. I mean, uh, we have to figure out how to get Elijah Molden on the field. I mean, Elijah improved when he played. He helped us, and he got better at nickel. And and Shane and the staff, they, you know, they they were finding ways to blitz him, to to have him cover and reroute. I mean, he. But then, you know, then he goes through a process and he tries to come back. But, you know, whether it's, hey, the return to play, coming back, hey, I feel really good. Okay, well, just because you feel really good doesn't mean you, you, you do more than what we've asked you to do. Like, but that's a good thing, but it's also bad. Like, that happens sometimes with Elijah. He's like, coach, I feel great. I'm like, I know, Elijah, this was only the plan for today. And then I turn around and then you're, you're back out there. Like, and I appreciate that you want to do that. But – we got to figure out ways to get you on the field and keep you on the field. So whether it's Christian Fulton, it's just an idea of how do we work past some of these things that have continued to happen. And, and we've tried to track the mileage, we've tried to track the speed. Um, you know, the acceleration is something that we have to track. I know that was, you know, something with, with David to start and stop. Like he's a sudden player. But, you know, we, we have to find ways to, to eliminate and try to mitigate some of the soft tissue injuries. Well, no, just being conscious. No, just being conscious of, of making sure that they're training, that we're all training the same way that we're going to play. Like, I've asked Frank and Brian Bell and Tyler Rouse to meet with our coaches extensively about the drill work that our coaches do and what we're going to ask our players to do on the field. It's not about running 40s. It's not about uh, doing 110s. It's about how do we put these players in similar drills that can recreate the acceleration, the change of speeds. Like we, talk, like we talk about the special teams play. I mean, we train the release. We train a, a, a staggered release, a sudden movement, that opens up their hip, that crosses over. Like if you don't train that and all of a sudden you do that, then you're gonna have some groin issues. Or we try to train the speed phase. What they're, what they're running and you know, they got, they got a guy tugging on them. Like that's, that's not good for hamstrings. So we have talked about that in the rules. Like can we watch a guy that's tugging a guy and just start calling penalties there? Maybe, maybe not. But then now it's the deceleration. It's the come to balance from going 20 miles an hour to come into balance, change in direction. So we've trained all those in the off season. Like Frank meets with, with Auk, and they do the release on the hoop. Okay, they're doing that one day. Then the next day, it's just straight speed. 
and then it's straight speed to come to balance, to go from 20 miles an hour to come to balance and then redirect. So we're trying to put them in the same positions. So we just ask them to do that when they're away so that when they come, I don't, I'm all set with the 40 yard dashes and the 110s and that. Like we gotta keep training the way that we're gonna play and explain that to the players. And the, tra and the trainers have been great. Like I get, they all have trainers and we communicate with them. And if they go to Florida, they, they want our feedback. And it's been really cool to reach out to those guys and say, hey, here's what we're doing. This is what we talked about at Area Focus for this player. And they've all been on board, and I'm, I'm glad they're all going somewhere and working. If they're not going to be with us, I'd rather them be somewhere who somebody's willing to communicate with us and, and help us. Good, yeah, I think, it, I think it's very good. I mean, I think it is. I, I mean, we just, our, our trainer, T Todd just won a national award, the NFL. And for a trainer, you know, whatever the, the Players Association's anonymous um, evaluation of our program, we addressed pretty much everything that we could. Um, but I don't ever want it to be, I don't want a program that needs an anonymous um, survey. I, I want our players, like I want to make a connection with them enough and them to trust me enough to say, Coach, I'm not really sure. And I've, I've had conversations with players. Like, guys, you have to talk to us and say, hey, here's how I feel. This is what we would normally do after a game. But maybe you feel a different way this week. And we modify to every single player, whether that's the plan on the practice field, that's the plan in the weight room. This player doesn't squat. This player doesn't do this. This, this, player does, this is how they do it. And they have a menu to pick from. And then the return to play. Like, these strength coaches, you guys watch, they're with the trainers and they're running from this guy to this guy and they're doing those same drills that we talked about before a player comes back, before we put them back onto the field. So we're, we're always trying to find ways to be better. We're always trying to find ways to keep our players um, healthy and, and we'll continue to do that. And, and I don't see it and it's not all on the player, and it's not all on the strength coach, and it's not all on the trainer. It's, it's all of us working together that if there is an injury, how do we get them back as quickly and as safely as we can so that they don't re-injure it? And when is a good time to, you know, I always go through this. You know, can you make it worse? Can you do your job, right? And can you protect yourself? And that's how I evaluate whether a player should come back and play in the, in the game or be ready to go. Hey, Mike, Mike, on a related Yeah. Um, have you seen the prevalence of that technique? And is that something you can coach we, out of the game? I think it's certainly you can. I don't think you can avoid the position. Um, you know, a lot of these times these, these tackles are in space. You know, and if you've ever been, you know, with one of them kitty cats out there in space, they're hard to, to get to. And sometimes when you have a, an idea that you want to take the, the hat out of the game and the helmet out of the game, sometimes that ends up on the back side of them and so you either end up in a gator roll to get them down or players drag them down we, we have to be able to identify these and say hey take care of your team take care of your, your fellow player can you get them down without coming down on the back of them but i don't know if we can we can put that in a, in a rule right now um and we'll just have to continue to identify it i know the injury rate is is, is significant um on, on some of these behaviors where you get the full body weight on the back of the legs.